So with the now unofficial but sort of official end to the original Zack Snyder DCEU with the Flash releasing, I thought it'd be fitting to rank the entire universe from worst to the best. The DCEU is incredibly flawed, but does include some of the best characters in the history of comic book films, as well as some really great movies. With James Gunn hitting the reset button on DC, we can expect a lot of change in the coming years, so before that happens, let's take a moment to reminisce in the good old days, in some of the really bad old days, because some of these movies are really stinky. Other ones, eh, pretty good. Make sure to like this video and subscribe before I get started. Also, turn on notifications. Also, spoilers are ahead for pretty much all of these. So I've tried watching this film on HBO Max so many different times now, and God help me, I can't get through it. It's really bad, and I'm convinced that it was written by like some AI generator, like a chat GBT thing. It also really rubs me the wrong way how The Rock essentially went around telling people this movie was a massive success, even though it bombed at the box office. This movie is just everything wrong with modern superhero films. It's just not good at all. It does nothing original, and just had, it's just so generic. And like I said, I've never made it to the third act of this movie, so maybe the third act is magical, and I'm just missing something great. But I'm. I'm just assuming it's not. Anyone else forget this movie happened? Because I did. Ewan McGregor as Black Mask is fantastic in this. There's literally just nothing else to say about this one. There's nothing else notable that happens. It's just really dull. I guess Margot Robbie is fun in this one. I mean, the entire thing is like a Harley Quinn solo movie, even though it's called Birds of Prey. I don't understand why you call the movie Birds of Prey when it's just a Harley Quinn movie. The people in charge of making this movie clearly had never picked up a Birds of Prey comic book because this is just not, it's not that. And I mean, I just feel like telling a story with, with Harley Quinn, just completely removing the Joker, it just doesn't work. I mean, the two characters were amazing to work off of each other. I don't know, this movie just always rubbed me the wrong way. I've just never been a big fan of it. But yes, Ewan McGregor is awesome. <laughs> If they gave out an Oscar for Best Trailer, this film probably would have won it because god dang it, that trailer kicked so much ass back in the day. The movie is a nonsense nothing burger that I mostly remember nothing about besides that one fun Pedro Pascal moment. Life is good but it can be better. The movie is hilariously dumb and includes a stupid supernatural MacGuffin that makes no sense. CGI Cheetah is really bad. Gal Gadot seemed like she really couldn't care less about this script and Chris Pine is here for some reason. His character is just, I, I don't know, there's so much bad in here. This movie is just not very good, but yes, the soundtrack is great, the trailer's great, all that stuff. Good job, guys. <laughs> The more I've let this film sit with me, the more I really, really hate it. This film is like the last Jedi of superhero movies. It's not like the rise of Skywalker bad, like it's not a total disgrace, but it had so much hype, so much anticipation, and it was adapting one of the greatest comic book stories of all time. So pretty much this movie had everything going for it. It should have been pretty fucking hard to mess this up, the same way The Last Jedi was hard to mess up. It should have been a layup, and somehow they scored a layup, but on maybe the other team's basket? This movie is atrocious, and I made an entire video talking about how I hate this movie, and, or really how I thought this movie was disappointing. I'll link it in the description, I'm not gonna go too into it here, so yeah, go watch that video, I have all my thoughts in the flash there. All my friends are eating steak, it's slow. This film is pretty bad, but I give it the benefit of at least sticking to a somewhat unique tone and musical style that makes the film its own unique taste. The music in this film is great, and the opening scenes introducing all the characters are excellent and have been copied by many other movies since. The performances here are really great, mostly with Jada Smith's wife being a standout in the role. But the villain sucks. I mean, the tone sucks, Jared Leto sucks, and this thing just kind of all together sort of sucks. Uh, there's probably a cut of this out there that's a lot better, that dives more into like the darker aspects of the film and gives you more of the Jared Leto stuff that we heard was actually great that was cut from the movie but as of right now that stuff just doesn't exist that cut doesn't exist we have the regular cut and it is just not that great everybody knows that you love me baby everybody okay listen this movie is nowhere near as bad as people say. Sure, the fact that it exists is a fucking disgrace, and Joss Whedon is a really scummy dude, but the film itself has enough of Snyder's original vision to be watchable. It has good moments, with the opening music montage being somewhat strong and the sewer fight being really cool, but the film does ultimately feel empty by its conclusion. It feels like there was, like, it was missing, like, an entire, I don't know, you know, 20,000 scenes. Almost like there was an entire other cut of this movie that existed. But it's far from the worst thing ever. It has its moments. It's definitely watchable. It is not an absolute dumpster fire. It's just the app the reasons that it exists and Snyder's original cut didn't exist in 2017 is the real reason why this movie kind of sucks Hi, my name is Hi, my name is Hi, my
My name the original Shazam movie is solid. It's just mostly kind of forgettable in a large world of superhero movies. I think the film has really weak villains and some really bad CGI, but the character of Shazam himself works really well, and the chemistry of all the kids are really fun to watch. I think Zachary Levi is fun in the role. He's fun to watch. He's kind of funny at times. The movie's a solid three out of five. I just think it's forgettable. Like, I forgot that I saw this movie, and I forgot pretty much everything that happened in it up until I rewatched it before the new Shazam came out. And honestly, this movie is just a little bit forgettable, but still a fun time. Families would love it. This is a movie I'm not really super high on, but I can admit that it's actually kind of good. The Suicide Squad is fine. James Gunn's intro into the DC Universe, this is a really fun film with great characters. It is a phenomenal second act. I just feel like the third act of this movie is a little bit much. And maybe Starro was just a little bit too ridiculous for me to swallow. I also just feel like this film took place in an empty universe. I mean, like, you can't establish a universe in which all these great characters exist, and then not offer an explanation as to why none of them showed up when a fucking giant alien starfish started blowing everything to shit. Luckily, Gunn sort of addressed this and Peacemaker, and it was really hilarious. But yeah, this film was good. I'm not as high on this movie as everybody else. I think it's solid and definitely a great watch, but I also find it to be a little bit slow, as well as a little bit unoriginal when it comes to the fish out of water plotline. A superhero movie set in World War One was definitely a unique taste, though, in the genre, and many of the fight scenes, specifically the ones centered in the trenches and in no man's land, were done really, really well, but, uh, you know, uh, the villain in this movie just kind of stunk ass. The ending was not really satisfying at all, especially after the second movie kind of redid the ending and undid the ending. It was just kind of stupid. Ultimately, this movie is just like a lot of these movies so far, a little bit forgettable, but a lot of people love it, so who am I to say that it's anything less than really good? I'm significantly higher on this movie than anybody else, I think. I loved it. I think this is one of the better family-oriented comic book movies that have come out in recent years. It's tons of fun, it includes a great cast of villains, an epic third act, and a final fight that ends up being way better than it had any right to be. A really fun cameo at the end, and ultimately just not much to complain about. I mean, it's a fun movie. The film doesn't take any major risks, and it doesn't jump too far away from the normal plot lines found in these types of things, but the movie is tons and tons of fun, with really likable characters, and ultimately, I think it's a little bit underrated. The original Aquaman movie is the one that I feel like is not talked about enough in this whole universe, but it's definitely a great film. Aquaman is played brilliantly by Jason Momoa, and James Wan proves that he's still one of the better filmmakers working today with his unique direction and action scenes, shooting everything wide and making it all, almost all look like one take. The fights in this movie are crazy, and the visuals are stunning. The overall story is nothing too original, and the third act does turn into a giant CGI mess like everything that comes out these days, and you know, Amber Heard also sort of ruins the film a little bit. But the final fight between Aquaman and Patrick Wilson's Ocean Master is super satisfying, and the film altogether is a solid experience, although I heard the sequel is a absolute dumpster fire. I want to note this is the ultimate cut of BVS, not the theatrical cut, because that version is significantly messier than this one. The ultimate cut, on the other hand, is an incredibly strong movie, which tells a really deep and complex story about how the world deals and reacts with a godlike presence such as Superman arriving. The film also introduces Ben Affleck's Batman, and this is by far the best version of that character that we had ever gotten. Stripping away all the goofy bullshit that you would see him do in all the sequels, and introducing us to an absolute tank of a Dark Knight who brutalizes his opponents. His fight with Superman is amazing, living up to the title of the movie. The film also includes the famous famous warehouse sequence, which is by far the best hand-to-hand -hand Batman scene we've ever gotten. Yes, the Doomsday stuff is stupid, and Lex Luthor is more like the Riddler than Lex Luthor himself, and Wonder Woman is sort of just kind of thrown in this movie randomly. But holy shit, her entrance is still the greatest entrance in comic book history. It's such a good scene. Do you really wanna, do you really wanna taste it? Peacemaker is the one and only show on this list, and man do I love it. A spin-off show from the Suicide Squad starring John Cena playing a character who wears a toilet on his head. Sounds like a recipe for disaster, but somehow James Gunn crafted a script and a story that's so much fun, so ridiculous, but also heartwarming and, or and original, and it ends up being what I think is by far the best comic book show we've had to date. This show is spotless, from its incredible intro to its hilarious ending. I loved just about every single second of it. It was so unique and so creative. It offered a different kind of villain that I had never really seen before in this type of thing. And God, I can't wait for season two when it comes out all the way in 2028. The movie we thought would never be made. The one that seemed impossible, but the fans pushed to make it happen in a way that I have never seen before and we will never see again. The Snyder Cut is a marvelous piece of work that I still can't believe exists after the mediocrity that was Justice League. This film might be overly long and sort of has kind of a ridiculous ending, but it's a film that's made for the fans by the biggest DC fan I think there is. It's made with so much respect for the character, so much love, includes a memorable soundtrack and villain, and does Snyder's vision of this story justice. The Flash's time travel scene is nothing short of brilliant. I mean, the final fight is so much 
much better than in the original 2017 film. Hell, he even fixed Jared Leto's Joker. I mean, the scene with him is great. A little shoehorned in, but still awesome. This is a phenomenal movie. One that deserved to be released in theaters back in 2017. One that deserves to be released in theaters now. And one that deserved a sequel that we're never gonna get. But uh, honestly, whatever. Zack Snyder got to make this movie. We got it out and it was worth it. It is phenomenal. To me, this is by far the best film from this era of DC, and quite possibly Zack Snyder's best movie to date. Man of Steel has it all. It introduces us to a grounded Superman, played brilliantly by Henry Cavill, who faces the incredible challenge of revealing himself and his godlike abilities to the world when super foe General Zod comes to Earth. And by God, is Michael Shannon so good as Zod. You wouldn't know it if you've only seen him in The Flash, but oh man, he is a great villain. This film is amazing. With the incredible opening on Krypton, the show, the terrifying reveal of Zod, as well as how Superman got to Earth, Earth, how Krypton blew up. It all leads to the terrifying reveal that Zod's coming to Earth, that scene where he just appears on the TVs around the world. It was so cool. The first flight scene partnered with the incredible Hans Zimmer score. I mean, oh my god. All leading to the brilliant final fight between Zod and Superman, the one that I will never understand why anybody complains about. I understand they, like, destroy the city, but you have to understand these are two gods. These are two of the most powerful gods in the world, one of which had his no idea how to use his powers. They're fighting in a city. I mean, wh where do you want to do? You want them to purposely move? somewhere where there's no people like I, I never understood the argument that there was too much of a disaster in this movie to me it's one of the best superhero battles ever and man the ending is perfect the sacrifice that superman makes to save humanity i mean it's just such an amazing film that i think would be more appreciated if it had come out today but overall yeah man of steel by far the best movie from this era of dc it was the first one from this era of dc and they peaked at the beginning so yeah, i hope you guys enjoyed that's the video let me know what your rankings are down below let me know if you're excited for james gunn's new universe make sure to like this video and subscribe for more and i will see y'all in the next one.